Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. So today is Black Friday and I just spent some time out in the woods like I normally try to do on Black Friday. Uh, be as far away from any shoppers or anything like that as possible. And today what I was doing is I was out just doing a little bit of scouting uh, looking for a good bug out location. Temporary kind of bug out location. Uh, my situation is is that I have a home that's still for sale in Virginia, so if anybody knows somebody looking to buy a home in Manassas, let me know. <laughs> um, and I've got my place here, which is just a kind of a small duplex in the city. And so if I was to have my family and I was to have to bug out or something like that, um, you know, I don't really have any family in the area and I don't own another piece of property currently, you know, as a permanent bug out location. Now that would be the optimum situation. But, in lieu of that, uh, pretty much my only other option then is to find some place out in National Forest or something along those lines. Now, let me just say that um, I understand and I appreciate that uh, bugging out to National Forest is not the optimum situation. Um, but, when you're left with no other options, that's kind of what you have to deal with. Um, there's definitely... Um, problems with going out to public land like a it could be closed the government could close it down and you could be fined or arrested for just being on the property uh, B there's other problems with the amount of time that you can stay on public property um, some areas don't let you cut firewood things like that you know fire restrictions and you know so there's definitely a whole myriad of issues but for me personally I'm gonna stay in my house as long as I possibly can until I feel that it's unsafe for me to be here any longer and I have to get outside you know of the civilization zone so to speak and so uh, the place that I was looking for today is basically going to be just a first stop um, of you know maybe three to five days or something just to see if everything is going to calm down or not that way I would be out far enough outside of town that I should reduce my exposure to other people because that's the real threat and I should have hit the fan kind of situation um, but not so far out that I'm completely remote and away from services right so you know it's roughly about an hour or so uh, from the house where I live here today now my secondary location which I haven't found yet that will be probably another two hours outside of that um, you know, deeper into, um, you know, wilderness areas and that kind of stuff. But anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the 10 things that I think are considerations for putting together or trying to find and locate a bug out location. Um, and you can do a lot of this research before you ever even leave the house, and that's what I did earlier today. Um, but, so let me, let me just go ahead and go into these tips. I'm not saying that these are the only, the only considerations that you should have, but these are just some of the ones that I was thinking about personally as I was you know, going through the search and looking for my location. And I'll put some tips, uh, or I'll put some pictures in here of you know, some of the areas as I'm talking so you're not just looking at me spouting this stuff off. Um, so the first thing was uh, it's got to be close to a water source. And, you know, that, that seems self-apparent. Um, in the area that I'm in, in Cheyenne, Wyoming area, water is not just everywhere. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a limiting factor. And it kind of, um, when you combine all the other options in here, it starts to limit down the areas pretty quick on where you can, you know, actually uh, find a place that's going to meet all your needs and everything. So that kind of goes into uh, the next one, and that is some place that's going to help shelter you from extreme winds and weather and that kind of stuff. Um, up here in in kind of the the high, I'll call it high high mountains. I mean, they're about eight thousand feet or so. They're not real high, but. Uh, you do have to deal with some pretty extreme wind around here and so taking that into consideration trying to be on the leeward side of uh, hills and mountains and geographical obstacles and stuff like that can really help you out a whole lot so that's another consideration uh, the next thing <coughs> excuse me is uh, close to resources such as timber uh, firewood edible plant life big game and small game as well if if possible even a fishing location would be nice 
Um, this is actually also another big limiting factor around here. For me, um, you know, out here in the west, and in the kind of these high plains slash high mountainous areas, there's not a lot of trees around Cheyenne. You wouldn't think that um, unless you'd actually been here, but there's really not. So that is, is sort of a limiting factor for me. And one of the things that I did in trying to search this out is I just used Google Earth, looked at the area that I was interested in, and then started looking for dense pockets of vegetation and tree cover that also had um, you know, water sources nearby, as well as access trails and stuff, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, so yeah, the next thing is I'm looking for something that is, you know, you want to have access on a, a semi kind of a main trail so that that'll be at least somewhat drivable pretty much year round if possible. Now, during heavy snows and stuff like that up here, that's going to be debatable because it might just be snowed in and that's just the way it would be. Um, but then I want it to be off of a main trail and then going, you know, down a sub trail and then the location would actually be off of the subtrail a little ways. And, and the reason I want to do that, the reason I want to be able to do that is because I'd like to be able to get my vehicle off of that main road, that highly traveled road, um, and then potentially, depending on the, you know, the environment, maybe even take my vehicle off of that trail and get it closer to my camp. Now, what that does for me is, is that, you know, obviously means that it's more resources that I can carry with me at one time if I can get my vehicle out there, and that would be the optimum situation. If I have to go on foot, then so be it. I can go on foot, but even with having those trails, I may be able to use uh, some different kinds of carts and stuff like that to help me c carry even more gear than I could normally carry on my back, and I plan on doing a video on that here shortly as well. Okay, so the next thing is um, I'd like it to be in a location, um, like I kind of already covered this, that, that I can have access to with my truck or my four-wheeler. All right, so that would be uh, number five. And then number six is, if possible, I also want it to be behind a gated area. And, <laughs> you know, maybe an old trail that was closed off or something like that. Um, you know, or um, after the Forest Service did their transportation policy a few years ago, they ended up closing off a lot of trails. And, you know, those things are just locked off with one lock. Um, in an emergency type situation, pop that lock off there, drive a truck through, <laughs> put the lock back on, you know, put another lock back on, and then head back through that area. And you're probably not going to have a whole lot of people coming through there. Um, you know, you might have recreational hikers and stuff like that, but if there's a true emergency going on, there's probably not going to be that many people um, unless they are of a similar mindset to you and they're looking for a place to bug out. And in that case, you just have to deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis and whether or not you decide you want to let them come and stay at your place as well or if you want to try to say, hey, you guys need to go somewhere else. That's going to have to be a judgment call on your part. Okay, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Number seven, I guess, a, a relatively flat area that is on higher ground, but yet not on the crest of the hill. You kind of want it to be down on the military crest or a halfway or a third of the way down or so. You don't want to be at the bottom of a hill because that's going to be kind of a cold sink. Um, that's also, generally speaking, probably, if you're close to a water source, going to be where your water source is running through. And when you look at having spring... Um, snow melt off and all that kind of stuff you don't want to be down too close to that because it's going to be a nasty mess so if you can find kind of a flat area that is kind of on the side of a ridge that's flattened out and you can have good visibility you know on the on the area of approach and where you were coming to and stuff like that it's going to make it more defensible um, it's also going to make it more comfortable because it's actually level and you can have a you know a level place to sleep and all that kind of stuff so that was another consideration for me and let's see, number eight, um, you, ideally you'd like to have it as close to the center of the park, uh, you know, the National Forest area as possible, or at least in the center of an area without or, or closer to the center of an area 
without a lot of roads. Now, you do want to have some road access to it, like I was saying, but if on the back side of that, you can get it to where your property actually, or not your property, but the area that you're in, is a, a relatively untraveled area, that's going to be better hunting ground for you. So you take your roads into your area, and then back in behind that is you know, an additional several thousand acres that people don't generally go back to, that's going to help your hunting efforts and stuff like that. And that's going to be kind of a sanctuary for a lot of the wildlife. And so you want to try to take advantage of that. Okay. Um, and, and one good way to find these when you're looking on the map is, you know, look towards the, um, look for trails uh, that kind of have like dead end trails that, that shoot kind of out into the middle of the wilderness area and then they just stop. You know, and then you can maybe take your camp just in a little bit further from that. Um, all right, and the last thing, uh, number 10, is just you, you really want, and, and I may have kind of covered this somewhat, but um, you really want to find an area that has uh, denser trees, kind of more older growth trees, you know, taller trees, um, you know, that are fairly dense. And the, the reason for that is, is that... A, it's going to be resources like we talked about, but B, that's also going to help defuse the signal from your campfire, you know, the smoke coming up from your campfire, um, and hopefully that will reduce, help to reduce your signature as well. Somebody's calling me. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you can find a place that's got those older growth, those bigger trees and stuff like that, that is going to be helpful for you to help reduce your signature. So... Anyway, guys, that has just been a few tips or a few ideas for, you know, considerations on finding a bug out location in a national forest. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not saying this is the most ideal situation, but I'm saying that there are some people like myself who right now may not have a lot of better, a lot of better options um, if it was to get really crazy here in the city. So, you know. Uh, just take these in consideration when you're looking for your location if you have to and if you have any other tips or thoughts Please put those in the comments below because like I said I'm in the process of finding my location right now And I could definitely use any kind of good advice that you may have if you guys like these kind of videos Please hit the subscribe button and I always appreciate it when you click the thumbs up button when you share it with your friends on Facebook Twitter and Google Plus and don't forget to live the six P's proper prior preparation prevents poor performance Stay safe guys